Hello everyone. Welcome to the next of the series of video clips designed to help prepare you for your public exam in Biology 3201. In this clip, we'll be taking a look at how it is that a neuron works. We've already mentioned the fact that neurons function to allow for transmission of signals down its length due to the structure of it. We've talked about how it is that neuron structure allows for an electrochemical signal to be transmitted from the dendrite through the soma or cell body through the axon to the end brush. But there is a technique, there is a techn uh, technical side to how that happens. To begin with, to understand how it is that a neuron functions, we have to begin our examination by understanding that in a neuron there is something known as a resting potential in a resting neuron. When a neuron as it rests, in other words, not transmitting a signal, it normally has a positive charge on the outside of the membrane and a negative charge on the inside. If you were to measure this voltage potential, this voltage difference, it would turn out to be negative 70 millivolts. And this charge value, this charge differential is known as the resting potential. And there is a threshold level that exists in this condition. How this resting potential is achieved is due to the fact that the outside has a high concentration of sodium ions, which are positive, and a lower concentration of potassium ions. Chlorine, which has a negative charge, is also outside the membrane, so there are charged ions involved. And inside the cell, there are proteins, amino acids, and phosphates, and sulfates, all of which help contribute to the negative charge. The positive charges inside the membrane are caused by a high concentration of potassium and a lower concentration of sodium. The membrane has specialized channels, voltage-regulated gates, that allow sodium potassium and chlorine to move. However, the proteins and the amino acids, due to their larger size, their larger anions, negatively charged, these are trapped inside the cell. The net result being that it creates the negative 70 millivolt charge. The inside of the neuron is negative, the outside is positive. At rest, the membrane is 50 times more permeable to potassium than the sodium. So while sodium is moving into the cell, and there is more potassium diffusing out. When this happens, this causes the inside of the cell to become more negatively charged. And although the increasing negative charge within the cell attracts both sodium and potassium, there is a mechanism, an active transport mechanism, known as the sodium-potassium pump that is found in the cell membrane. This offsets the attraction. As I mentioned, the pump uses active transport to pull three sodium cations, positive, from the inside of the cell to the outside. And in exchange, two potassium cations are pulled from the outside to the inside. This further increases the difference in the charge. So in short, the slight difference in charge is due to the unequal distribution of cations and anions. The difference in charge is approximately negative 70 millivolts, and this is referred to as the resting potential. Now, when a neuron is sufficiently stimulated, beyond the threshold level. The following occurs. Firstly, a wave of depolarization is triggered. So when the, it's stimulated, the potassium channel gates close. No potassium can move. The gates of the sodium channels open. Because of the concentration gradient, and remember, in a neuron, if I were to sketch it, you would see that the inside of the cell is negative, and potassium is high. 
on the outside is relatively positive. Sodium is high. So when the gates open up, because of the low concentration of sodium inside, sodium will rush in. With the inrushing of sodium ions, it caused a change in the charge on the outside and inside of the pot axon. The outside becomes negative, the inside becomes positive. To try and diagram this out, if we were to draw this here as representing the axon. At rest, potassium is high, sodium is low. On the outside, it's the exact opposite. Sodium, high, potassium, low. When a signal happens, the sodium gates open up. The potassium gates, which were open, will now close. What happens then is sodium rushes in. This means that at the, in the axon, it will become positive inside, negative outside in this region. Potassium doesn't leave, but sodium rushes in. The influx of sodium creates, causes a depolarization event. This change in charge is called the action potential. And when one part of an axon is triggered, depolarized, this causes neighboring sections to open. And this will continue along the length of the axon. One section triggering a change in the adjacent section, and so on, and so on, and so on. So when this section here gets stimulated, it causes an adjacent section to open. allowing for an influx of sodium here. And this rushes in, create, causing this section to be positive, which in turn caused the same impact here, which causes more sodium to rush in. At this point, create, causing this section to now become positive. And this continues down the length of the axon. Once a depolarization event has happened, it's now necessary for it to be reestablished, the normal resting potential. And repolarization is that exact process. Repolarization is the reestablishment of the normal distribution of ions in an axon. In other words, returning to the normal positive outside negative inside charge differential. Axons are only depolarized for a split second. Immediately following the sodium channel's opening, which has caused depolarization, the potassium channels reopen, and potassium ions move out. At the same time, the sodium channels close, and this action the act of potassium opening, sodium closing, combined with the rapid act of transfer of sodium out by the sodium potassium pump, reestablished the polarity of that region of the axon. So again, to try and draw this out, if we have an axon which has been depolarized, it was depolarized because the sodium channels opened up in this region. This allowed for sodium to rush in. This created the positive charge. That's depolarization. Immediately after, what very quickly happens is 
potassium gates open up, this allows for potassium to flow out. At the same time, the sodium gate closes, preventing any more sodium from entering. The sodium potassium pump, which I'll draw here with a circle, pumps sodium out, three of them in fact, and at the same time pumps potassium in, two in. This further allows for, because of the difference, you're bringing more positive out than, in, than uh, positives in, for the reestablishment of the normal rested potential. This event is known as repolarization. Now, the speed of which this process occurs allows an axon to send many impulses along its length every second if stimulated sufficiently. Once this event has occurred, the axon will undergo what is known as a refractory period. And the refractory period is the brief time between the triggering of an impulse along an axon and when it is available for the next. And this is called the refractory period. During this period of time, no new action potentials can occur. When we looked at neuron structure, myelin increased the speed of a wave of depolarization. The threshold, as I previously mentioned, is a stimulus which is strong enough to fire a neuron, and the strength of the stimulus doesn't affect the speed of the response. It is a neuron either firing or it doesn't. It's an all or none response. Pulling harder on the trigger of a gun doesn't affect the speed of the bullet. The all or none principle simply states, if an axon is stimulated sufficiently, that being above its threshold, the axon will trigger an impulse down the length of the axon. So to try and explain this by way of a diagram. If we were to draw a diagram which indicated resting potential, or charge differential rather, along one axis, and time in milliseconds, along the x-axis, we will start with a resting potential of minus 70. And I'll just put some things in here just for graphical representation. This is the chart resting potential in millivolts. At rest, and I'll draw this in red, the neuron starts off at rest at negative 70 millivolts. That's the resting potential. When the neuron is stimulated, remember, with the influx of sodium, sodium rushes in, this triggers an action potential to be generated. During this time, sodium channels are opening, potassium are closed, the threshold potential is reached, and this triggers a full-blown action potential. After it has passed very quickly, the sodium channels close, become inactivated, potassium channels open, and potassium rushes out. This causes a very rapid drop in potential. The potassium channels close relatively slowly, causing a very brief undershoot, which you see here. And during this time, the sodium-potassium pump further returns to the resting potential. So to try and illustrate here, step one, resting potential. Step two, sodium rushes in, causing a very rapid depolarization. Step three, the resting potential is restored. Because the rapid onset, you often get a very brief undershoot. You go over, and during this time, 
the resting potential gets restored and a new action potential can be generated. So you start off with resting potential, negative inside, positive outside. It's triggered, stimulated, sodium rushes in, causing a spike. The voltage then gets restored back as it becomes depolarized, or repolarized rather. There's often the brief undershoot, and during this time, the refractory period, the rest of the potential gets restored. By way of some example cons uh, questions from previous public examination, we had the following. Which shows the ion distribution inside the neuron membrane during an action potential? In other words, during stimulation. Remember, at rest, potassium is high inside. Sodium is high outside. However, when depolarization occurs, the potassium gates are closed and sodium rushes in. The correct answer then would be A. During the action potential, during the stimulation, during the depolarization event, sodium becomes high inside. This is what accounts for the temporary positive charge. Further question, which describes the movement of ions by the sodium-potassium pump? The answer is it is pumping more sodium out than potassium in. During an action potential, you saw this one previously. High, high. But again, I'm just bringing this up for reiteration. Because the simple time, sometimes you say you simply need to read the question authority. In past exams, it has been commonplace that students may have confused this. They may have looked at, at rest. This question is not about the, uh, concentration at rest. It's about what is actually there during the action potential event. A constructive response question related to this topic. A stimulus is received by a neuron. The membrane surrounding the neuron continues to be depolarized. Why might this occur? What is the result for, eva for a value of 3%? The answer is you may see drugs, medication that could interfere with the sodium potassium pump for 1.5%, stating that the result is no repolarization another one and a half percent. That was the accepted answer as provided for this exam. A further constructive response question. The graph below shows the potential difference between the inside and outside of a motor neuron. The question at hand is, did an action potential pass down the neuron? Why or why not? The key thing to know here is that this, you're indicated what the threshold level is. Remember that unless a signal crosses threshold, no action potential will be generated. You can see that in this case, the membrane potential is negative. It started to rise, then it dropped off. At no time did the voltage potential cross threshold. So the answer to this question would be, no, it has not, for one mark. Simply, it's very important, you must state the stimulus has not reached a threshold level. Simply saying no will give you one point out of two. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope you found this review clip helpful.